Over the course of the two decades it has existed, Halo has managed to provide some of the greatest multiplayer experiences that completely revolutionized the way we played video games. And Halo has a track record of having some of the best designed multiplayer maps out of any competitive video game ever made. And while a lot of times when a game developer reuses assets or ideas, it can come across as lazy, but somehow Halo has always managed to take concepts that have been successful in the past and repurpose them and reuse them in different ways and sometimes the end result is a uniquely improved experience over the predecessor. So today we thought it'd be interesting to take a look at our picks for the best maps that have been remade over the years from Halo. First up, we wanted to take a look at the classic Halo Combat Evolved level, Hang 'em High, which actually has some inspiration drawn from the Marathon 2 level, What About Bob? It's not an exact remake, but you can tell that there's some inspiration from the open areas from that level that made their way into Halo 1. Ultimately, Hang 'em High was a really unique map because of all of the open space and led to some really crazy pistol fights in the original Halo back in the day. And while the graphics might be a little dated on it now, it was later brought back in Halo 2 in the form of the level Tombstone. This map was actually originally intended to be a launch map in Halo 2, however, they couldn't get the right feel of the original level to translate into the Halo 2 physics engine, so it took until certain Affinity, who worked on a DLC pack for Halo 2, to find the perfect balance that would work in the Halo 2 atmosphere. And sure enough, Tombstone is still a popular map in Halo 2 to this day. Similarly, when Halo 3 was in development, it looked like Bungie wanted to find a way to incorporate Hang 'em High into Halo 3, however, they once again ran into trouble finding a good design that would work well. And while they shelved the idea of bringing back Hang 'em High with the launch of Halo 3, by the time that they released the ODST DLC packs in Mythic 2, the map Longshore was released, which drew some inspiration from Hang 'em High. Now, this level obviously isn't a one to one remake by any means, but you can definitely feel the similarities in this map while also having the addition of of walls and rooms to give extra cover to accommodate Halo 3 gameplay. But Hang 'em High would be one of the maps that they chose to bring back yet again in Halo Reach for the Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. This time around, the map was more in line with how it looked in the original game, but it still played a little bit differently because of the Reach mechanics. Another map that also drew some inspiration from Bungie's older games included Foundation from Halo 2, which is a clear callback to Thunderdome from from Marathon 2's Thunderdome. Another classic map that we experienced back in Halo Combat Evolved was the map Sidewinder, which was a big snowy map that allowed for some really interesting big team battle gameplay. This map would see a remake later on in Halo 3 in the form of Avalanche, which was honestly a beautiful visual overhaul to what they had going on in the first version of this level. However, this version is also much more spread out to accommodate Halo 3's style of gameplay and also has an entire cliff wall removed in favor of having a more open feeling to the sandbox. Either way, Avalanche is kind of one of those key levels that you can point to when looking at how you can transform a map that is really old into something that accommodates a new style of gameplay, something that we'd really like to see in more modern Halos in the future. But Avalanche wasn't the only time we would see Bungie take on a Halo 1 map and repurpose it in Halo 3. Cold Storage is actually another beautiful repurpose of the level Chill Out from Halo 1. And honestly, Chill Out was known for being a really small map and was more or less forgettable. However, Cold Storage was such an awesome adaptation and a good reason to remind people Chill Out existed in the first place. But putting players in a flood research station was just a really cool and atmospheric move on Bungie's part. On the other hand, when Halo 2 released, we saw some really great iconic maps that did launch with the game itself, like the level Lockdown, which was really popular for arena-styled gameplay. This level was would make its way into Halo 3 with a new design in the form of Blackout, which took a lot of the concepts of Lockdown while changing the atmosphere up a bit, changing the time of day, and also kind of making a standout map that fit in the catalog of Halo 3 maps in its own unique way. This version took the same feel of that arena gameplay, but spread out some certain rooms to make the balance and flow of the level a little bit better for what Halo 3 had to offer. But with the 
general popularity that Lockout had in Halo 2 just because of not only the way it looked, but just the competitiveness that went into this map. It was no surprise really that this map also would make its way into Halo 2 Anniversary when they were choosing just a select number of maps to fully remaster for that launch. And this new version does a great job at keeping the feel of Lockout without changing up things in the way they did with Blackout, but also added some new features along the way to kind of sit uniquely on its own. It's definitely one of the more direct translations we've seen in Halo, but it worked out well. Similarly, if you go all the way back to Halo 1 and you look at the level Derelict, it was a small close quarters arena battling map in outer space. They actually took this level and made it look completely different while keeping most of the same geometry found in the first Halo in the remade version Desolation. And while Luke and I both think that the version from Halo 1 looked a lot better, it's cool how they took this translation in Halo 2 and made a map look completely different while being it where it plays more or less the same way. In Halo 2, another arena map that was really popular was definitely the level Midship, and this level actually would be remade several times in the future. In Halo 3, we had the level Heretic, which was a direct remake of Midship with a few minor changes here and there, and was kind of a good last hurrah for Halo 3 as it released with the ODST pack in Mythic 2, but also a good nod to one of the greatest Halo maps of all time. Similar Similarly, in Halo Reach, a level called Zealot looks to be heavily inspired by Midship, and while it's not at all a one-to-one -one replica, you can definitely see that there were inspirations when designing this level, and they probably started with some version of Mythic or Heretic as a base and built upon that to best accommodate the new movement style found in Halo Reach. However, Midship's life wouldn't end there, where all the way in Halo 5 Guardians, we would see it return yet again, but this time in two different versions with the levels Truth and Regret. Both of these are pretty much the same level, however they have very different aesthetics associated with it, where one is in space and stands a lot more true to the original design found in Halo 2 and 3, where the other one takes on a more post-apocalyptic type feel, being this crashed ship, but still plays the same way. And we really like that they kind of found a way to not only mix the original style, but also provide some Something different. And this is one of the times we can actually say 343 did something really good here with old Halo content. Right after 343 took over for Bungie back in the day and they were working on Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary, they actually hired certain Affinity back on to work on a Halo Reach DLC pack and they put together a level called Breakneck, which was a remake of the very popular Halo 2 level Headlong. Now Headlong was really popular just because it was a very different feel to a level. It was a round open city level that had vehicles that you could loop around and do warthog runs on while taking out other enemies and it was great for both big team battles and small encounters at times if you're using ranged weapons. So when they transformed this map into the Halo Reach DLC for Halo Combat Evolved it actually came across really well. They drew a ton of inspiration not only from the original level but took some inspiration from even Halo 3 ODST which takes place in the same city where this level takes place and it just felt like a really good update to a level that really stands out when you compare it against other levels in Halo Reach. Interestingly enough, the level Ivory Tower was a level that was originally designed by certain affinity for Halo 2. However, Bungie would go ahead and recreate their level when working on the original base game for Halo Reach with the level Reflection. Now this level is also featured in the campaign. However, the base map became a very popular multiplayer map and honestly, just the changes kept the same feeling of being in an office space, but kind of upgraded it a little bit and kind of made the newer version live up to to the Ivory Tower name by having a lot of brighter colors while still keeping the open feel that Ivory Tower was known for with the close quarter hallways surrounding outer areas. This is a really cool map and it wasn't one that anyone really expected Bungie to go ahead and remake when Halo Reach came around. One map from Halo 2 though that was really popular back in the day was the level Turf. It just was a lot more modern and close quarters and it just had a very different feel to it. It definitely 
traditionally made games with long respawn times or even elimination type games feel much more competitive. And while we haven't had a main release of this level in a long time, Halo Online, which was a free to play Halo game released in Russia a few years back, actually saw a re-release of this level in the form of Icebox. Now the level aesthetically looks completely different, but it was really cool when Halo was released in El Dorito that I finally was able to experience this level for the first time, and it's just cool to see this really awesome attention to detail and redesign while also keeping the level feeling mostly the same while also kind of embracing the new elements that Halo 3 had to offer, which Halo Online was initially based off of. Another really cool thing that Halo Online also had was the level Diamondback, and if you remember us talking about Avalanche earlier in this video, Diamondback took on the concept from Avalanche and completely removed all the snow and made a desert version of this really popular map. They easily could have just thrown Avalanche in there and it would have been good, but it definitely was really cool to see some new content and new takes on classic maps in Halo Online. But we also can't forget about Battle Creek, which was a classic Halo map back in the day as well in Combat Evolved, which served for this great close quarters team-based gameplay that had players kind of running base to base and having sight lines across a level, while also having this chaotic middle with teleporters that could take you around the flanks, and it was a really fun map. There's no surprise that this level would make a return in Halo 2, as it seemed like Bungie wanted to bring back a lot of the popular maps, and Beaver Creek was born, which added a couple extra routes, and mostly stayed pretty true to the style of gameplay that it had been popular for. We would, however, see this level once again in Halo Reach with the Combat Evolved DLC pack that came out, with the final version being called Battle Canyon. And now this level, of course, not only is the best looking remake, in our opinion, from Halo Anniversary, but also really played well into some of the strengths that Beaver Creek had over the years, and it even moved the teleporter into a place that would make it a little bit harder for players to just spawn camp. This was a really good redesign, and we really are a fan with the way that this level's been treated over the years, even with them remaking it kind of in Forge mode for Halo 5, which isn't an official release, but it's still cool to know that this level has a warm place in a lot of players' hearts. And while all of these maps were really good in their own right, there's three more maps that have been remade over the years that really stand out in Halo history, and we personally think that Halo has done these maps great over the years with the way that they've been handled with remakes, so we wanted to go ahead and kind of give them a special note here. The level Zanzibar, which initially debuted in Halo 2, was a pretty level nonetheless as it had this really cool beach and this factory setting and was just fun enough to play in multiplayer, but when this level was remade for Halo 3, which released just three years after Halo 2, the level mostly is unchanged and it feels exactly the way it looked and felt in Halo 2, but graphically speaking, you could see the huge improvements that Bungie had made between Halo 2 and Halo 3 in just the short development cycle, and it kind of spoke to the amount of power that the next generation consoles had with the Xbox 360 and how Halo really was utilizing this new power and how Bungie was able to maximize the appearance of this level that people were already familiar with. Similarly, we saw this level remade again when Halo 2 Anniversary came out on the Xbox One, making it one of the few levels that have appeared on every single console, at least in a new way, and once again the Halo 2 Anniversary version of this map is just as beautiful, if not more beautiful, than what we had in Halo 2 and Halo 3, but it spoke to the level of detail that that Halo was now capable of because of the Xbox One power. Even if the whole Master Chief Collection was a mess at launch, it was cool to see this level in a new design once again, and you can kind of compare it to previous years. Looking at Halo 4, which was 343 Industries first game in the Halo franchise, or the first major game they took under their belt, we can look at the map Haven, which is possibly both Luke and I's least favorite map in Halo 4. It's just so ugly looking. It looked like when they were planning some sort of aesthetic or design, they went with the color silver and white and just said, make a map off of that. And while the layout of the map isn't the worst thing ever, the design was just awful. and is almost a perfect representation as to what went wrong with Halo's art 
art style with Halo 4. However, this was completely changed when they decided to revisit this map in Halo 5 Guardians as one of the few maps that got a true to form remake in that game. And actually, this map single handedly is the reason we decided to make this video in the first place just because of how amazed we were looking at this map once it was remade. The Halo 5 map, Mercy, completely took the structure that more or less worked in Halo 4 and overhauled it with a really unique art style which we believe takes place on the planet Sanghelios, but just the way that they changed the lighting, they added so much atmosphere in just what's going on in the background, they put an interesting skybox, and it just completely did a full 180 on how this map felt and played, where it went from being one of the worst and most generic looking maps in Halo history to one of the most rich and lively levels that we've ever seen. It makes us hopeful for what's going to come in the future with Halo Infinite, as this map was designed in DLC, so it came out way after Halo 5 Guardian's development ended, and maybe this is a sign of what type of aesthetic we could get in future Halo games. And if future levels look like this, and we see maps that are designed with this much attention to detail, Tale, there's no doubt that Halo Infinite would be off to a much better start than other Halos we've seen in the past. But besides Mercy being such a great map, the one map that has stood the test of time throughout Halo and constantly is being revisited with new releases has to go, of course, to the classic level, Blood Gulch. This map is known for so many reasons, for so many great game nights in big team battle from way back into the LAN party days through the evolution that this level has had throughout the years. Now, Valhalla and Ragnarok, featured in Halo 3 and Halo 4, get an honorable mention because those levels were obviously inspired by Blood Gulch, but they decided to kind of change things up to match a new aesthetic, and those levels are great in their own right, but you can't knock down how great Blood Gulch and its successors truly were. Halo 2 took on Coagulation, which was the remake of Blood Gulch, and added an extra layer to each of the bases, and kind of had a more open feel and better sight lines, while the levels still mostly stayed the same. These levels were absolute classics if you played Halo 1 or Halo 2 way back in the day, and they stand true even after all this time. In Halo Reach, they took the concept of Blood Gulch, and they incorporated it into Forge World and essentially recreated that same canyon that was so popular back in the day but for a new generation of gameplay and it worked even in Halo Reach. After all these years and all the different mechanics that Reach had, this was still an extremely popular battleground. But Halo Reach took it a step further and they used it as the basis for their Forge World which added all of these new places that people could build their own maps on and build classic maps on and it kind of became this landing zone for an entire community of Halo. So Forge World obviously is possibly the greatest remake we've ever seen in Halo history. Now of course Blood Gulch would be remade again or Coagulation was remade again in Halo 2 Anniversary's Bloodline and it's a pretty great remake and it definitely revisits the canyon feel yet again. However we can't help miss the open area that Forge World offered after having that extra room back in the day. You kind of take that extra space for forging for granted when you have all of the area to work with. Still, nonetheless, for the most part, whenever Halo revisits an old map, it's typically well received and players don't seem to have a major problem with it. Now, we definitely think 343 moving forward should continue to create their own maps along the way, but these were some of the greatest remakes we've seen over the years that we really enjoyed. Notice the map Pitfall from Halo 4 didn't make this list at all. But ultimately, we're optimistic for the future as to what 343 Industries could provide, especially with the way that they handled some of the Halo 5 Guardians maps. We're critical of 343 at times, but also we gotta say some of the map designs, especially Mercy, were just absolutely outstanding. But now we wanted to turn around to you guys. What did you guys think of some of the remade maps throughout the years? There's a ton we didn't have time to get to in this video, but we'd love to know what you guys think. Leave a comment down below. Be sure to subscribe with notifications on for more videos just like this. We'll see you all next time with a brand new video. Bye guys.